Well, there are all kinds of ways to test your soil, but my favorite way to test soil that I've just found about actually got started in about 2018 out in Oregon. And well, we're digging up our special test device now. Chris, what you got down there? We have a pair of cotton underpants that we yes. buried about two months ago. Oh my gosh, it is the Soil Your Undies Challenge. And let's see what's coming out. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is a pair of very large underwear with a little bit of a uh, rip in them. And uh, what is this telling me about the soil? Uh, this is telling you that there's very little microbial activity in, in this particular site. Uh, this pair itself was not very well degraded. And so in fact, looking at previous examples, it's almost entirely intact. So the, the whole concept was to look at soil health uh -huh. and get people to understand how the practices that they're doing, the traditional practices, um, can actually over time degrade the soil. And so the whole concept of soil health gets people to think about the way that they're managing their land so that when they're looking 10 years down the line or 20 years down the line, they're improving the overall soil quality. And that's not just about like the nutrients, it's about having a, a robust microbial uh, community. So we talk about microbiomes. And the idea of proliferating communities that can help to withstand disease and drought helps to overall boost the productivity of these soils. Okay, so we do often talk about soil is alive. Right. So that's what you're getting at, right? That's exactly right. All these things living in the soil, and you're saying there's not a lot of them living right. here, <laughs> apparently, because the undies are intact. That's while absolutely correct. Dirty. Okay, so now this is interesting. We are actually at uh, Vanderbilt's Peabody, beautiful lawn here. Yes. It looks gorgeous to me. It We're does. under these amazing old oak trees. I would look at this soil down here and I'd think, hey, that looks good. But according to the undie test, nothing's going on down there. Yeah, that's right. So, you know, one of the things that we think is that, first of all, this lawn that we're looking at right here was way over here. There's a lot of activity that's happening on these lawns and they actually decided to uh, save a little bit more and mulch it and let it sort of rest, right? So not only do they have less uh, lawn to, to work with, they actually enable the trees to be able to proliferate their roots because human traffic actually hurts their roots as well. And so one of the things that they did is actually sprayed an herbicide to get rid of the lawn. So that's one factor. And another factor is that the fact that this has been sitting under human traffic and, and other types of traffic means that this, this uh, soil has become quite compacted. And so the physical properties of the soil aren't that great. Even though looking at it, it looks like a pretty healthy soil. If you look at the color, um, even the texture, um, it actually looks pretty good. But again, if you can't get water and air exchange, then you're not going to have this prolific microbial activity, which when overall would degrade the undies. Wow, this is fascinating. Okay, so, um, I would have thought that if they were using pesticides, that would certainly make a difference. But herbicides, does that come as a surprise? It does come as a surprise. And it's one, one of the ideas that has to do with like the fact that you're creating a microbiome, that, that phrase that I mentioned earlier. And it's not just about the things and the nutrients that, that the, the microbes are eating, but also the things that are eating the microbes. And so, the things that the microbes eat. So for example, if a microbe is you know, relying on that tiny fine root that it once had, and the, the herbicide was applied to it and those roots are no longer there, then they can no longer uh, exist in that, in that community. And so the idea of having as many different substrates as they can feed off of as possible can help to foster a vibrant community of microbes. Very interesting. So we might be starving our microbes, which is unfortunate. I understand that here all over Vanderbilt, you have planted some additional undies that we need to go and look at in different conditions. Yeah, that's absolutely right. Be really careful because you know you can rip them in the process really easily. But yep. We lost the little leggings, but it's that's all that's left. Chris, where did your undies go? <laughs> 
Okay, so this area is not very far away from the first pair. It's not. And it almost, I mean, this soil, I would say, looks worse because it's clay. It looks sort of compacted. So uh, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. So <clears throat> if you look at the, at the structure, you know, it's, it really is a lot more, as you say, it's a lot more clay rich. You can see by the color there and the blocky structure. It's not, not really that type of granular uh, structure that you're looking for that enables water to flow through and nutrients. But as it is, we see that there's quite a lot of microbial activity going on here. So the question is why? Why, why is it happening here and not there? Um, and so, you know, again, we talked about compaction. This, this soil is fairly compacted. It is a, de it's definitely a different soil itself. I mean, that's the fact that we were having, you know, these large clay chunks in there. Um, this means it's different. Well, now this does have grass growing in it. It does. So not only does it have grass growing in it, but you can see some of the leaf litter that's been mulched onto the grass itself as a part of what they do uh, to manage this lawn. They, they regularly will mulch the leaves in and allow the organic matter to settle in, create some organic acids that can, can be a substrate for, for my, microbes to, to break down. So, okay, so if I um, buried undies in my yard uh -huh. and this happened, I'd be pretty happy, you right? Be pretty happy, absolutely. Okay, well, uh, I think we need to go find more undies. All right, let's do it. Well, Chris, looky here. Once again, we've got, uh, yeah, degraded undies. That's right. Down here, this is interesting. We've got some clay and stuff. So, um, this is something I could do at my house, couldn't I? Absolutely, and that's one of the ideas of this experiment. It's something that everybody can do and contribute to the scientific community, right? Just by doing this experiment at your home, we're learning more about how your yard practices are helping uh, to foster communities of microbes within the soil. Well, and it seems to me it could be a uh, really fun and uh, inexpensive way to sort of test out my own soil. Yep. So how long um, and what kind of undies do I need to have in the ground? So the most important part is that these are a fresh pair of cotton under, underpants. It has to be, has to be cotton. Um, also, the fact that they need to be uh, free from bacteria. So that's why we don't want to reuse any underwear because um, if you were to inoculate it with bacteria that are already there, it would change the experiment. So that's really the only thing you need to do. And the important thing is that you bury them for two months and it gives them time to, uh, you know, to, for the soil processes to, to take place. Um, and we're typically doing it during growing seasons, right? Once the winter comes around, the soil temperature will, will decrease and microbial activity will decrease as well. All right, I imagine that then if I dig my undies up in my yard after about two months and they end up pretty much looking a little bit new, but soiled, that I need to take some time to uh, learn more about soil microbes and plant some cover crops and do other things. Yeah, there's plenty of things you can do to improve your soil. So, Chris, this program seems to be really spanning a lot of departments here at Vanderbilt. I know you have students involved, but uh, you have some other departments doing research, too. I do, yeah. This is part of the, the, the Ascend initiative that was a chancellor-funded study where we decided to get a bunch of scientists from around campus in different disciplines to sit down and talk about research that we could do collaboratively. And this is a great example of that project where we're working with microbiologists, soil ecologists, uh, geologists to better understand, like in this case, the soil health, right? And so what Allison's doing is she's sampling uh, the soil to look to uh, be able to find different types of bacteria. In this case, actinomycetes, is that correct, Allison? Yes. Actinomycetes uh, that might be present. And you may have heard of actinomycetes because they have actually been used um, to create antibiotics. So these, these uh, bacteria not only can help to break down things like underwear and uh, the soil and plant roots, but also uh, give us uh, treatments for different types of disease. Well, Chris, thank you so very much for coming out here with me today and talking about soiling our undies for science. Well, thanks so much, as I've really enjoyed talking to you and talking to you about the research we're doing around here. Um, and I love the work that you're doing and uh, volunteer gardener, so. Well, this is something that, remember, anybody can do. It's citizen science. It's obviously a lot of fun, and it can tell you a lot about your soil health.
For inspiring garden tours, growing tips, and garden projects, visit our website at volunteergardener.org or on YouTube at the Volunteer Gardener channel and like us on Facebook.